Uh, new machinery? <laughs> not new machinery, I'm actually taking a video. Hi everyone, welcome back once again to another vlog. Hope you all are doing well and staying safe. It's been so long that someone came home for either lunch or dinner. We have friends and family who are invited or come often for food or snacks. Corona had blocked all such gatherings. Nowadays the cases here are reducing and thank God we are able to meet our friends and family. Maybe not like how we used to but still keeping in mind of the norms. So last Friday my brother, my cousin had come over for lunch. Hence, few dishes prepared have been included in today's video. Hope you like it. Keep watching. As usual, any preparations begins the previous day or night. And that mainly would be either dessert or marinations. So as a dessert to be served after lunch, I prepared falooda with a homemade ice cream. So beginning with ice cream, I'm using whipping cream, one cup. You may use a stand mixer or a hand blender. In between, I got a call from my brother who is in Kerala. He usually calls me once in three or four days to chat on his way back from the clinic or else we all have group calls. Anyhow, it's refreshing to get calls from the family. Now this is Dream Whip, that's the whipping powder, two sachets. Adding this makes the ice cream extra creamy. I continued only after I spoke to him for a while. Whip the cream on high speed. You may use a strong blender for this, but make sure you freeze the blender at least one hour before using to blend the cream. Now this has whipped well. Since the whipping powder had some sugar and vanilla powder, I am skipping the vanilla essence and folding in only half tin condensed milk. You may check the sweetness and add more if needed. Then goes one cup tutti frutti or any dry fruits of your choice. Don't stir it, only fold. Then goes half cup desiccated coconut. This gives a bit of crunch. These are optional. You may add chopped nuts or melted chocolate or even skip all and keep it plain. Transfer to an airtight container. Tap a bit and place in the freezer at least 12 hours. The main course was prawns biryani that's wrapped in banana leaf. It has a different aroma when eaten in the banana leaf. So here I took around one and quarter kilo prawns. I guess I have shown how to clean prawns using kitchen shears or the scissors. Cut out these legs. Then cut through the center right over here till the end. Open the skin and cut onto here as shown. If you don't want the head, you can cut completely here. Then pull the skin from the tail and there you get the skin removed completely. Now de-wean from the back, that's the thread like thing over here. And finally cutting on top. And that's it. Similarly do all the same. It's definitely time consuming but when using a knife for me it takes double the time. I had mentioned earlier that whenever I do works that's easy but time consuming it becomes really boring. And at those times I try to hear motivational classes to get rid of the boredom. I had never mentioned about Dr. Moinu. He's an advocate, an international certified trainer, therapist, psychologist and lots. Now this is nothing sponsored just sharing my experience. It was in fact after attending his NLP course, I came out of that depression stage. Moinu Sir's classes 
or the course is in Malayalam, but he does have books published in English. I can share the details to his website below. You may contact if you are interested. His books, his classes, his course has helped me a lot and sharing with you all who are in need. As it was getting really late, there came my helping hand. For the falooda, you need mixed nuts. I used cashews, almonds, walnuts. Just a simple marination for the prawns. 2 tablespoons of Kashmiri red chilli powder. 3 4 to 1 teaspoon turmeric powder. Salt. Coconut oil. Black pepper powder. Add some water and make a marinade. Mix the prawns in it. Cover and keep in the refrigerator. This is jelly for falooda. I had two flavors, both different brands. Do check the instructions and follow as per that. I made a mistake thinking the same instructions for both. So the yellow one didn't get set for me. I had received many pictures on email and Instagram on the previous video's recipe Kerala putta and black chana curry. Thank you so much. Today again it was putta but with freezed leftover rice. This too is really soft one and can be done using any leftover rice. I have this recipe done earlier. We'll put the link in the description box. For the falooda, making roast milk. So for that boiling 5 cups milk. The milk has to boil for some time. You don't have to reduce to half. I had mentioned this in many party vlogs. It's always better to wash the dishes as soon as you finish using them. To flavor the milk, I'm using cashew powder, grinding a handful of cashew, add the ground cashews to the milk and mix. Instead of this, you may use any nuts or a mix of it. Had this condensed milk left after preparing ice cream, so added half cup, but this was a bit less sweet, do add half more cup to make it perfect. Adding 2 tablespoons of rose syrup. I added raw hafsa. I guess 2 tablespoons was just enough. Adding more might give good color but would taste more of a syrup than rose milk. My favorite combos for putter would be banana for sweet and fish curry for spicy. And this was previous day fish curry which always tastes the best the next day. I have the recipe for this again in the same vlog of the putter so do check it out.
that's crushed ginger garlic and green chilies the exact quantity is in the description box Slicing onion in a food processor saves a lot of time. As I said earlier, the yellow jelly didn't get set because of not following the instructions. Only the red one got set. Fry onions till golden brown. Add curry leaves for a good flavor. I didn't have time to roast the spices for garam masala. That's cardamom pods, cloves, cinnamon, black peppercorns, cumin seeds, fennel seeds, star anise, that's mace, a piece of nutmeg, ground and that's the garam masala. Fry some cashews and raisins as a garnish for biryani. That's turmeric powder left from the stock I keep which was brought last vacation. I guess I'll have to buy after some time. I never buy spice powders from the market as these were brought from Kerala whenever I come back from vacation. I'm roasting two whole chicken in pan over the stove top. For that you need to marinate the whole chicken for 30 to 40 minutes. So for that, take the pan in which you'll be making the chicken. Add one and a half cup curd, half to three four teaspoon turmeric powder, two tablespoons Kashmiri red chilli powder, half tablespoon coriander powder, one teaspoon garam masala powder. Chop coriander leaves and few mint leaves. That's one spoon of oil. I use the oil that was left after frying the onions. Salt. Juice of one lemon. Mix everything very well. Clean and give slits on a whole chicken. I have used two whole chicken of one kilo each. Cover and leave aside. Fry the prawns for 10 minutes in hot ghee. Once the roast cashew milk has cooled down, add into a jug and keep in the refrigerator until chilled. After frying all the prawns into the same pan, add oil, saute crushed ginger garlic green chili paste, 2 tablespoons, then goes onion. You need just one onion sliced as the fried onions will also be added later. Once the onion is sorted well, add tomatoes. I have blended the tomatoes. You may chop or slice, it's up to you. Add a handful of chopped coriander leaves and fried onion. Keep aside some of the fried onions for garnish. Mix for two minutes. Then add one tablespoon coriander powder 
वन टी स्पून गरम मसाला एंड हाफ टी स्पून टर्मरिक पाउडर मिक्स वेल टिल द रॉस मिल गोज एंड देन एड फ्राइड प्रॉन्स कीप मिक्सिंग फॉर टू थ्री मिनट्स एड सॉल्ट एज पर नीडेड नाउ इट्स डन For the rice, I used four cups jeera ka shala rice. You can use basmati too. This is optional. Adding two boiled eggs into each chicken. Tie the legs together with kitchen twine. Keep this covered. and cook on low flame preparing the rice in pressure cooker heat ghee i added garam masala powder instead of whole spices add one sliced onion and few curry leaves You need to saute for 2 minutes that's all. Add washed and drained rice. Mix the rice on low flame for 5 minutes. Don't forget to check on the chicken. Make sure you have thick bottom vessel if it's steam or else you can use non-stick. For 4 cups rice, add 7 cups hot water and salt. Some chopped coriander leaves and mint leaves. Cover, lock the flame, keep on medium high flame till the first whistle. and then lower the flame to the maximum and cook for 5 minutes after 10 to 12 minutes of cooking the chicken turn to the other side in between pour the gravy on top keep on medium flame and do not cover it let the gravy reduce a bit keep turning the chicken to the other side every 5 minutes Use a pointed knife to check whether it has cooked inside. And that's done. It took around 30 minutes overall. This time didn't get good banana leaves. You will have to pass the banana leaf over the flame to soften the leaf so that it doesn't tear. I wanted to make it in a kiwi shape, but as leaves were torn, couldn't get a good kiwi shape. So had to make it pudi or pat, like how I had done pudi chura some time back. add some rice then the prawn masala and then again some rice add fried onions cashews and raisins pack it and tie now you have to put on dum by steaming since i didn't have a large steamer to place all in one i placed it in the oven at 180 degrees celsius for 10 minutes now if you have time to steam each for 10 minutes in a small steamer that also can be done Or else you can place it in an oven like how I did. The aroma from the banana leaf is infused in the biryani, and it's amazingly delicious. Both gives the same flavor. And that's our lunch. Some prawns masala was left, so I served that too in case anyone needed it. And that's a steaming prawns pudi biryani. The flavor of prawns with the rice is always divine. The time you have spent for cleaning the prawns is worth while you have the output. It's always satisfying to have food after your guest and family is served. So I relaxingly had my food after serving what I had to serve.
after a heavy lunch a bit of chit chats as he was our family and getting to see after a long time we had a lot to share on what's going on in the family i prepared the falooda later as the lunch was heavy and we were stuffed so i had enough time to clean and get fresh i had seen many using vermicelli and i personally like that as well but the royal falooda is always seen with the sieve that's prepared with half cup corn starch or the corn flour with 1 and 1/2 cup water and mixing 2 teaspoons sugar When the corn flour is mixed completely, keep that on low medium flame. Once the corn flour starts to thicken, lower the flame and let the mixture become translucent. The pure white color should completely fade to this color. Keep ice water ready. You may use a piping bag or a jalebi bottle squeezer or an idiyap maker like mine. Add the hot corn flour mix into this. squeeze into the ice water keep as such for 5 minutes do not mix before that that sabja seeds or the basil seeds soak in water for 10 minutes i used a mix of fruits that included apple mango banana and that was ripe plantain then pomegranate and grapes that's the ice cream chop the fruits into small cubes so that it's easy to get that bite along with the rest keeping everything ready for assembling adding some jelly at the bottom then goes the sabja seeds that's fluffed up after soaking these are basil seeds and not chia seeds add the sieve pour the chilled cashew rose milk mix nuts with some raisins then goes the mixed fruits pour more of the chilled milk top with a scoop of ice cream i felt there was something missing and that was a garnish with the nuts a small one for me because though i love sweets and desserts i like to eat it in small quantity My husband and kids had gone to badminton club and I went to gym for some workouts. Me and my husband we both were not hungry but kids wanted dinner. As rice was over, I served them the leftover put and some roasted chicken pieces. I had a herbal tea with mint leaves and spices. And that ends today's video. Hope you all liked it. If so, do give a thumbs up and don't forget to try the recipes. Shall wait for your feedback. Do send me your recipe pictures through email or Instagram. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe for more updates. See you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye bye.